everyone was excited about riding the Turbo Python 3000. Except the man with the yellow hat. He was afraid of roller coasters and remembered the first and last time he rode a roller coaster. It was so long ago, he was just the boy with the yellow hat. <laughs> and since that day, roller coasters upset him. Okay, I'm a grown man. I have no reason to fear a roller coaster. No! Uh, enjoy the ride, George. Whew. I am thirsty. Well, excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry, but you can't ride the Turbo Python 3000. Huh? Well, you have to be as tall as this sign to ride. And, uh, you're not. <laughs> So you want to grow big and strong like me, huh? <laughs> Great! I'll show you the proper workout, and you can be as big as me in five years! <laughs> George couldn't wait five years. Not today. <laughs> had grown half a licorice whip. Eating like a giraffe and exercising really helped. Maybe he could stretch himself the last half a licorice whip. That's it, honey. Go to sleep. Nothing makes you grow like a good sleep. And I want you to grow up to be big and healthy. All this growing made George tired. If sleep made you grow, he could do two things at once. <laughs> sleep made George grow a lot, at least in his dream. I'm sorry, you can't ride the Turbo Python 3000. You're too big! <laughs> George didn't grow as big as he had in his dream, but he grew enough to be five licorice whips tall. chance you've been nibbling on those licorice whips, George? <laughs> when you were first measured, the licorice whips were longer, so it took four of them to measure you. <laughs> but every time you took a bite, you made it smaller, so now it takes five to measure you. <laughs> so you didn't grow at all. Sorry. <laughs> What's with all these sour faces? I don't like sour faces at me park, you know. Oh, hi there, Captain Zany. You see, this monkey's too short to ride the Turbo Python 3000. Too short? Bah! He's not too short. Monkeys don't grow very big. That's why we have the... You must be this tall if you're a monkey side. <sighs> <laughs> you can ride, George, and I'm coming with you. But first, give me all your licorice.
The next morning, George emerged from the tent ready for anything. Well, anything but. Time to go home, George. George. Soon. But soon never came. Aww. Poor George. I don't know when I'll be able to take him camping again. Gee, I haven't gone camping in years. Hey, maybe that's what Hundley and I should do on our next day off. Camp. And George can come too. Oh, that would be great. George, would you like to go camping with Hundley? <laughs> <laughs> should be as good a spot as any since we've got the trailer. As an expert camper, George knew that he had to gather firewood. As a lobby dog, Hunley knew that he had to keep everything orderly and dignified. George was sure he'd gathered more than that. <laughs> we don't need firewood, George. I have a microwave oven. Hunley thought either someone just took his picture or that was lightning. They didn't know how long it had rained, because the clock in the trailer had stopped working. Until now, Hunley thought only George could make a mess this big. I left the top down. The rain ruined the auto-navigator. It's too dark to find our way home without it. But we can't stay in that soggy trailer, either. It did seem hopeless. George wondered what an expert camper would do. George, but all of our sleeping bags are soaked. As an expert camper, George did know one thing hot enough to dry them. If you're thinking about building a fire with that, we can't. We need dry wood for that. Using the lighter in George's pack, the doorman was able to start a warm fire. But without electricity, he was unable to open a can. Then George remembered something else that campers do. They cook food on sticks. In the end, they all had a very satisfying meal. Okay, the only rule is that you cannot cut through the corn stalks. Everybody ready? Yes. <laughs> On your marks, get set, maze! So, we should go this way. <laughs> Oops. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I know the bell sounded like it's that way 
But we are here. The map says left. <laughs> but, hold on, George. <laughs> oh, tough break for the little monkey. He's hit another dead end, leaving them in last place there. Here we are. <laughs> you want to ring the bell? <laughs> Team George is the last to reach checkpoint one. I doubt they'll ever catch Team Quint. Now turn. Hmm. Just turn? Well, what have you say, Tina? See? Here's the bridge and the red tractor. It it's all on the map. The maze looked a lot more like the map when seen from above. And now George could easily see the path to the next bell. <laughs> I'm right behind you, George. Team George is back in the race. But uh oh, folks, looks like Sprint is running in circles. OK, George, which way now? Oh, I see. Every direction looks the same, so we can't orient the map. I guess we're lost. George saw the bridge, the duck pond, even Leslie the cow. <laughs> but they were all in the wrong place. Until George turned the map just right. Now everything lined up. <laughs> and George knew exactly where they had to go. <laughs> that way? Let's go. <laughs> Are we lost again? George, we're almost to the finish line. <laughs> Our map! <laughs> Follow the cow? <laughs> Don't you still want to race? <laughs> I hear them. They're coming. It could be all over any second. <laughs> this is it. And the winner is... a cow! A cow? Well, I don't think the cow's a contestant. <laughs> no, this is our winner, Team George! <laughs> we won? But how? Oh, here, I don't need it anymore. Oh, oh. Yeah. Well, Bye. makes us third. Stop. Destination reached. Excuse me? Looks like you two win the golden cob. That's one smart monkey, knowing that Leslie can always find the barn at milking time. Oh, very clever, George. <laughs> cool trophy. Good race. Uh -huh. Good. <laughs> yes, listeners, it has been quite a day. Has anyone seen my microphone? Now watch closely, George, and witness a little magic. First, I dip the egg in the yellow dye. Then, I dip the yellow egg into the blue dye and presto, it comes out, uh, green. Exactly. But if yellow and blue made green, George wondered, 
what would blue and red make? Why, George, you've created a brand new fruit, a perp banana. George, you're yellow! Huh? <laughs> oh no, I gave my guarantee and now a whole monkey is wrecked. Betsy, what am I gonna do? Don't look at me. You're in charge, Chef Steve. Uh, there, problem solved. No one will ever know he's yellow now. <laughs> Sometimes I think I'm a genius. When red and blue made purple, maybe he could find what colors made brown and dye himself back to normal. George, no! Orange. <laughs> oh, a blue dog and an orange monkey. What could be worse than that? <laughs> Where'd they go? I don't know, but we better find them before the bird watchers do. Voila! I see the red bird perched on the stop sign by the fire truck. Are there many orange monkeys in this park? No, I have the only monkey in town and he's monkey colored. Usually. Oh no. George, there you are. Where's Charky? <laughs> <laughs> it's very close. <gasps> I see the red tanager. Don't anybody move. <sighs> Let's see. If I remember right, red and blue makes purple, and purple and orange make brown. Just hurry before the bird watchers get back. I am sure George is clean as a cucumber. They're here. What do we do? Hide? Oh, oh. Where's George? <sighs> As a chef, I cannot tell a lie. George fell into the... Oh, there you are. Taking another bath to keep extra clean for the picture? <laughs> and to think, I thought that I might find a messy monkey. <laughs> I got the egg. Whoa! George, you're... You're red. He's as red as the red summer tanager. <gasps> this gives me a fabulous idea. A true dedication to the red summer tanager. This will be the best bird watcher's cover ever. And so it was, thanks to a certain colorful monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Not really giant. They just look giant because they're so close to this teeny tiny camera. See? Ooh. Oh yeah. Okay, Hoagie. Find the marker, boy. Hey. 
George couldn't believe all the stuff under Aunt Margaret's couch. <laughs> huh. Stairs? Wiseman's camera. Bicycle, 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 bicycle. Phew. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Looks like he's near the dinosaur bush. See? It's right here on the map. Okay, we have to split up. Someone has to watch the computer so we know where Hoagie goes. We can use my walkie-talkies to communicate. I'll tell you what landmarks I see here, and you can find them on the map and grab Hoagie. <laughs> he was at the intersection below Aunt Margaret's. The dino bush was on the next corner on his left. <laughs> but Hoagie wasn't. <laughs> George! George! Hoagie's on the move again! Do you see him? <laughs> okay. He's standing beside some really big feet. I think it's a statue. trees on the map. The park was in front of George. He needed to go straight. And there was a bicycle. But it wasn't a hoagie-sized bike. Uh, I don't know where he is. I can't see anything. Aunt Margaret's house was down the next street. Maybe Hoagie had just gone home. I'm getting a signal again. Whoa, Hoagie is really high up. He's next to something really big and really orange. George was here, and Hoagie was at the construction site. The quickest way was straight up. George could chase the camera later. First, he wanted to get Hoagie home. And he could get there without a map. George, Hoagie landed in the park. <laughs> now he's walking, and he's got a really big tongue. George, do you copy? George! <laughs> Hoagie! I missed you, buddy! Uh, oh, wait, if you're here, who's there? Hey, that's our door! Uh, coming, camera! <laughs> Charky? How'd you get this? <laughs> Hello, Steve. Oh, hey, Professor. Uh, I still have your camera for you. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, my. 
Well, I've got to run. Wait, Professor, you have to see this. My hamster can fly. Come on, Hoagie, show the Professor. Fly, buddy, fly. <laughs> uh, we know you can fly. I don't get it. Hey, what movie is on the menu tonight? The Basket of the Houndervilles. <laughs> Houndervilles? Oh, that sounds like our kind of movie, doesn't it, Hunley? Woo, woo. Hunley was partial to Dr. Honest Toes, Basil's extremely neat assistant. <gasps> <gasps> oh, excuse me. Psst. Psst. My cookbook. She is missing. <gasps> oh? Where's the last place you saw it? Here. You see, I go to hand out the menus, I hear a noise, I come back, and poof! Like that, the cookbook, she's vanished. Oh, and without it... <laughs> You're ruined? Nah, bad dessert sure is. <laughs> I don't know how to make the topping for my blueberry surprise without it. It has to be around here somewhere. George realized. <laughs> He had his very own mystery, the case of the missing cookbook. Ooh. The first thing to do was look for clues. Keep looking. I'll start the movie. Maybe you'll find your cookbook before it's over. <laughs> the mystery of the missing cookbook really had George stumped. Ah. Maybe the detective movie would help him learn how to solve his case. Two shoes. I've called you because my most precious book has gone missing. Huh? Ooh. George was in luck. The movie was about a missing book, too. What do you see, Detective? 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 We're here. With his trusty assistant, Dr. Hundley Doxon, by his side, he was certain to solve the case. Dr. Doxon didn't like a messy crime scene. But messes might contain clues. It smelled like flour and gravy. Oh, no. Detective Needs to Know had left his magnifying glass at home. Luckily, there was plenty of water nearby. He just had to squeeze a bit to make it round like the vase. Ooh. <laughs> George might have missed the movie, but he did get an idea that might help solve his mystery. Hmm. Oh, that's right, the cookbook. Did you find it? Uh, we looked everywhere. If George's dream was right, he had an idea how to find the cookbook. He just needed to examine the clues. Um, George? I'm not sure if this is the best time to make water balloons. <laughs> if there's one thing a detective can't stand, it's a magnifying glass that leaks. And there weren't any vases. had rounded sides and was clear. Maybe it would magnify things, too. <laughs> he had a magnifying glass that wouldn't break or spill. What are you... Are you making a magnifying glass like Basil? <laughs> oh, hey, look at these prints. Those might be gnocchis. <laughs> Oh, look at that. 
Gnocchi's tongue is blue. She must have eaten the blueberries. Yeah, look at that. There's blueberries spilled all over the countertop. George had it. He never does this at home. Ah! My recipe book! <laughs> Yogi, you must have knocked it into my blueberry surprise when you were sneaking blueberries, huh? Thank you, Detective Giorgio. You are the greatest detective ever! <laughs> That. Honeycomb. It's what bees make inside a beehive. Bees build hives to lay their eggs and to store pollen and honey. Hmm. Today is Earth Day, and I'm doing my Junior Farmer's Earth Day speech on honeybees. You want to hear it? If we say yes, can we have honey? Hmm, maybe. Okay. <clears throat> bees are amazing creatures. They build hives in trees, mostly. Thousands of bees can live there. All the other bees follow a queen. She's the biggest bee, and there's only one in a hive. Every bee has a job. Drones mate with the queen, but worker bees go from flower to flower getting nectar and pollen to make honey. <laughs> oh, man, that is good. Try some. We ate Betsy's honeycomb, and she needs it for her speech. <laughs> oh, what are we gonna do? <laughs> Good thinking, George. Do you have honeycomb? Honeycomb? <laughs> the park is full of trees. Maybe there's a beehive in one of them. George couldn't find a hive. Huh? <gasps> ah! Howdy! Buster Beesman's a name, but you can call me Buzz. Honeycomb! We need honeycomb! Sorry, fella. Just sold the last one. No! <laughs> oh, this is a beehive. I built it from scratch. Huh? A beehive? It didn't look anything like the beehive in Betsy's picture. This top box is called a shallow super. <laughs> the bees make honeycomb in it. This deeper box is where the queen bee lives and lays her eggs. And this grid makes sure she stays in the right box so you don't wind up with bee eggs in your honey. And then George realized, if they couldn't find honeycomb, he'd just have to make it. Mm, the bees don't really just show up. Usually you have to buy them. <laughs> Well, sure, if you've got some boring old hive. But we'll make our hive extra special grade. That way, bees will move in right away. <laughs> Oops, broke my lead. Hey, George, do you have a pencil sharpener? <laughs> and then George realized he didn't need to build boxes. The apartment was full of them. did have drawers that fit together. And they came with their own lid. Ah. Kitchen cabinets were practically a one-stop shopping spot for beehive parts. Ah. Answer. Ah. 
They didn't call them frames for nothing. George was just missing one part. <gasps> okay, George. So, uh, how do we drum up bees? <laughs> Betsy said bees go from flower to flower. Maybe if their hive had flowers, the bees would move in. You'll be here any mi- Ah! Betsy! You're- <laughs> Is this what I think it is? Wait, Betsy, I can explain. See, you said have a taste, so we- <laughs> uh, Just the tiniest slice. And it was yum, and then- Where'd it go? Ah! So we tried to buy you more, but everyone was out, so we built you a hive instead. You guys- You've done a lot of things, but this, this is absolutely, by far, the best present you've ever given me! It is? Uh -huh. But we ate your honeycomb. Yeah. What? Oh no, that piece of honeycomb was for you. I've got lots more. What? Huh? Oh, show me how this works. I want to use it in my Earth Day presentation. Sure. Betsy had a hive. Steve and George had more honeycomb. Everyone was happy. Well, almost everyone. of course. Huh? Maybe it rolled here. George had to get the egg back to its nest before it was too late. Wait! Eggs can break. Like that. Plus, you shouldn't slosh them around. We have to find your mommy so she can come and sit on Tiffany. <laughs> Found an egg, huh? <laughs> That's one big egg. Might be an eagle egg. Huh? That's the only bird around here with an egg that size. There's an eagle nesting in the pine grove down by the lake. That's... <gasps> oh. Allie was right. It was getting hot. George had to hurry. Well, they got to be here somewhere. They couldn't just walk away. Well, they could. I just hope they didn't because that would be a disaster. His egg wasn't nearly so big. How could Mr. Rankins ever have thought his egg was an eagle's egg? Hmm. He'd drawn his egg way too big. <gasps> if George was going to find the egg's mommy, he had to make sure his egg drawing was the right size. That's a red-necked grebe. They nest on the water. I saw a few over. <laughs> but how was he going to get to it? You can't swim without sunscreen. Nope, not here either. <coughs> Mr. Quint was right. Grebe eggs were the same size as George's egg, but their color was all wrong. George's egg didn't have spots, but his drawing did. Hmm. That's our Tiffany, all right. Oh. <laughs> uh, did you find the mommy? <coughs> if George was going to find the egg's mommy, his drawing had to be the right size and the right color. Anyone know what kind of egg this is? 
Looks like a house wren to me. I'd say it's a parakeet. Mm, more like a house finch to me. You got that, George? A house wren, a parakeet, or a house finch? <laughs> and house finches had light blue eggs. Oh, George still looking for the mommy? Yeah. Uh, they all must have hatched. Oh, oh, hi, George. <laughs> the man was looking for eggs, too? <laughs> what is it, George? Oh, oh, Lord. George? As you can see, all kinds of animals lay eggs. Amphibians, reptiles, monotremes. Don't forget dinosaurs! <laughs> Maybe George would find one of those eggs next year. <laughs>